Good morning, or whatever time of day it is when you tune in here. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm delighted that you have joined us for this way to give thanks in the midst of the pandemic. I'm glad that you're a part of this unseen virtual community. And if you are someone whom I know, then chances are I am giving thanks for you today. Thanksgiving for theologically thoughtful people, and I mean the holiday, the national U.S. American holiday, Thanksgiving for theologically thoughtful people, can no longer be interwoven in any respect with the misrepresentation of what supposedly happened at the first Thanksgiving between the Native Americans and some of the pilgrims. The glamorization of that story and the sentiment, sentimentalization of that story have misled people for generations. Almost nothing about that tradition, the way many people think about the holiday of Thanksgiving and the supposed first Thanksgiving, almost none of those traditions is correct, is true. We must not, as U.S. Americans, and especially as middle class and even wealthy U.S. Americans, we must not use this holiday to gloat, to imagine even in the tiniest corner of our conscious, consciousness that we have the abundance of gifts that most of us enjoy even when we're not aware of them because God has favored us with these gifts and decided not to favor the majority of people in the world with such material wealth and the opportunities that come from being wealthy. That is nonsense. It is to a person who takes in and interprets correctly the entirety of the message of Judeo-Christian scripture that is offensive. Giving thanks doesn't mean giving thanks to God in a way that implies we have been given something that other people have been denied. According to the creation stories in Genesis, when the world was created, there was bounty planned for everyone. Poverty was not envisioned, nor with it hunger or struggle or strife. We have been conditioned throughout most of our lives, if not all of our lives, to give thanks for 
things and unusually um, high-ranking privileges. Winning an Oscar, winning a football championship, winning a political contest, So today I want to challenge us not to do that and encourage us not to cast God aside as if God is uninvolved in the goodness of life. I don't believe that for a second. I'm thinking that Thanksgiving is more of an attitude than an act. Although clearly our attitudes influence how we live. Another point I'd like to make here at the beginning today is an extension of what I started to say a moment ago, and that is the kinds of things that we are conditioned to give thanks for in our prayers and in conversations, uh, even if we're not people who pray, are material very much of the time. I suppose there's no way to try to give thanks for gifts that we think that we have without somehow even informally, in a mental way, separating ourselves from those who don't have the gift. But this is 
a part of the journey of learning the meaning of true thanksgiving, I think. Giving thanks for things that are not material. Being grateful for the diligence of people working to find cures for disease and find correctives for world hunger. Giving thanks for the ability to speak and write, to communicate, I mean. Uh, the ability to be creative enough to compose a note to express our concern when someone is struggling or to express our gratitude when someone has done a kindness for us. Thank you, God, for the impulse to do something concrete and constructive even when I'm too tired. Those kinds of things. So, a different twist on Thanksgiving, for sure, this year. A part of it also has to do with simply saying thank you. People all the time are doing kind things for us, most of us, in the part of the world we live in. So, revisioning the meaning of thanksgiving. an important goal for this year.
Pastor John Harper was the pastor of the Walworth Road Baptist Church in London. Evidently, he had been called to be the pastor of the Moody Church in Chicago. Even across the waters, his outstanding preaching had uh, caught the attention of this great church who was looking for a pastor. Pastor Harper, along with his six-year-old daughter and either his sister or his niece, those who know the story are not certain about that detail, boarded a ship, I gather in London, by the name of the Titanic. I don't know the route of the Titanic, but I do know that it headed toward Ireland before coming toward the United States. And uh, that uh, while he was on that segment of the journey from London to Queenstown, Ireland, he wrote a note dated April 11th, 1912, three days before the, the tragedy of the Titanic occurred. It was addressed to a brother young. It was a thank you note. Something brother young had done uh, helped Pastor Harper uh, prepare for the long journey. And he wrote, in part, I am penning you this line just before we get to Queenstown to assure you that I have not forgotten you and especially all your kindness while we were north. Aboard the supposedly unsinkable ship, it began to sink. Harper's daughter and sister or niece got a spot on a life raft. And the ship's crew assumed since he was a widower, he would get on that raft with them, but he elected not to. Then they thought uh, he was a minister. He would stay back a bit, wear a life vest, uh, help others who were uh, trying to find ways to save themselves. But Harper gave his own life vest away. And as the Titanic sank, he, he preached. He preached to those who might escape, and he preached to those who clearly would not escape. He stayed on board the ship and descended into the freezing water. Before that occurred, on Titanic stationery, he had written this note, which was fairly recently discovered, a relic from the Titanic. A thank you note.
The Apostle Paul was dictating his letter to the church in Philippi. He was barely into the letter and his exuberance for this congregation with whom he shared the closest relationship of all the congregations with whom he worked just could not be contained. I thank my God every time I remember you. Let our Thanksgiving season, our day, our Thanksgiving day this year, be centered upon giving thanks for those people in our lives who bring us joy and happiness and focus and meaning and reasons to celebrate. May we pray. Gracious God, we are learning how to be people who live out thanksgiving. We are learning that your graciousness far exceeds our imaginations. We're learning that it really is a fact that your love from the beginning has extended to the whole human race. Any gift that comes to us, our words of gratitude for that gift should be primarily focused on the privilege of sharing. Amen. Mm -hmm.